Empress Elizabeth of Austria and Queen of Hungary, affectionately called Sissi, was known for her striking beauty and elegant style, a romantic and sensitive soul, her passion for horses and traveling, but most of all for her restless spirit and tragic life events, including her death at the hands of an assassin. Her appreciation of Hungary, its culture and traditions, endeared her to the Hungarian people. There are few more beloved legendary queens in Hungarian history than Sissi. Even during her lifetime, she was venerated by Hungarians and the attraction was mutual. In this video, we will briefly talk about her extraordinary life and then dig deeper into her special bond with Hungary and the Hungarians, as well as her pivotal role in the Austro-Hungarian Compromise of 1867. Born on December 24, 1837, Sissi was the third child of Duke Maximilian Joseph in Bavaria and Princess Ludovica of Bavaria. She spent a happy and free childhood in and around Schloss Possenhofen in Bavaria, where she grew up in an unrestrained and unstructured environment. She often skipped her lessons to go riding around the countryside. It was during these early formative years that she developed a lifelong appreciation of nature, adventure and freedom. Later she became a skilled horse rider. Sitting side saddle, she was considered one of the best riders in Europe. After marrying Franz Joseph I of Austria on April 24, 1854, Sissi became Empress of Austria. She studied etiquette and history, English, French and German. Later she also learned Hungarian and Greek. From early on, her days at the imperial court were marked by a struggle to adapt to the rigid protocols and expectations, chiefly imposed on her by her chillingly strict mother-in-law, Princess Sophie of Bavaria. In 1855, Sissi gave birth to her first child, Sophie. A year later, Gisela was born, and in 1858, the long-awaited heir to the throne, Rudolf. But before Rudolf's birth, Sissi had tragically lost her firstborn. Sophie died of typhus at the age of two, a loss from which she never fully recovered. Later, in 1868, she had a fourth child, Marie Valérie. Born in Hungary, this Hungarian daughter was smothered with love and affection by her mother. Sissi was excluded from the upbringing and education of her children, the task of which was taken over by the imperial court. Since she had no control over most aspects of her personal life, she started to work on her own body. Through rigid workouts, fasting and tight lacing of her corset, she could keep her slender waistline, which she flaunted all her life. In 1860, following a severe mental and physical crisis, Sissi embarked on a trip to the island of Madeira to recuperate. This was the beginning of her countless travels, which later took her to many different countries, 
including Egypt, Greece, Italy, and England. When she returned to the court from Madeira two years later, she started to question the conventions of the dynasty, giving priority to her personal interests. It was at this time that she started learning Hungarian with great application and success. In 1864, the Hungarian noblewoman Ida von Ferenczi was appointed as Her Majesty's reader, eventually becoming one of her closest confidants. Sisi became an appreciator of Hungarian literature and read the works of authors like Józef Ötvös and Mór Jókai. On June 8, 1867, Franz Joseph and Elizabeth were crowned King and Queen of Hungary in Matthias Church in Budapest. As a wedding gift from the Hungarian government, the royal couple got the Baroque castle of Gödöllő. They stayed here for the first time in the fall of 1867. Gödöllő soon became one of Sissi's favorite refugees to escape the constraints of Vienna. The Empress could also practice her favorite sport, horse riding, in the huge park of the castle. Here I have peace. No one bothers me. No imperial pomp and circumstance. Nothing stresses me here either. I live a simple provincial life. I can go out by myself and take long walks, she wrote to her mother in one of her letters. Sissi's idyllic lifestyle suddenly came to an end when her son, Crown Prince Rudolf, committed a murder-suicide with his lover, Mary Wetzera, at the Meyerling Hunting Lodge in 1889. She spent the last years of her life in a state of deep mourning. She traveled extensively, seeking solace in foreign lands and escaping the strict and stuffy Viennese court life, and her husband, whom she had encouraged in his relationship with the Austrian actress Katharina Schratt. In September 1898, she was staying in the Swiss hotel Beau Rivage. On the fateful autumn day of September 10, 1898, an Italian anarchist, Luigi Luceni, stabbed her while she was walking on the promenade in Geneva. It was only after her extremely tight corset laces were cut that the severity of her injuries became apparent. Following her death, not only Franz Josef, but the whole Austro-Hungarian Empire was in deep mourning. In Hungary, people started to refer to her as the Guardian Angel or the New Saint Elizabeth of Hungary. One of the reasons of this exceptional respect is that the Hungarian public opinion of the time attributed a crucial role to her in the creation of the Austro-Hungarian Compromise of 1867. It is a fact that Sissi, who had so little interest in politics, used all the means at her disposal as imperial consort to restore the sour relationship between Austria and Hungary. After the Battle of Königgrätz on July 3, 1866, in which the Kingdom of Prussia defeated the Austrian Empire, she traveled to Buda with the covert mission of finding out about the sentiment of Hungarians towards the Habsburg dynasty. Instead of a planned short visit, Sisi spent the rest of the war period in Buda. 
From here, she sent her husband and the Viennese court many letters urging reconciliation with Hungary. On July 13, 1866, she wrote a desperate letter pleading to appoint Count Gyula Andrási as prime minister. Her pleas, coinciding with the weakening of Franz Joseph's position within the monarchy, found listening ears at the Viennese court. In 1867, the emperor agreed to the compromise plan, restoring Hungary's traditional rights and granting its independence in the framework of a dual monarchy. On February 17, 1867, Andrási was appointed the first prime minister of the Hungarian half of the newly formed dual monarchy of Austria-Hungary. With the compromise, the two halves of the empire became two formerly independent states of equal status, headed by a single monarch who reigned as Emperor of Austria in the Austrian half of the empire and as King of Hungary in the Kingdom of Hungary. There is much truth to the saying, behind every great man there is a great woman. Sisi's political astuteness, her support of the Hungarian autonomy and her good relationship with Count Gyula Andrási were instrumental in the establishment of the dual monarchy and secured the stability and future of the Austro-Hungarian Empire for years to come.